All right, Sky News host Steve Price joins me now. Steve, you just heard some of those hostile questions from the ABC, The Guardian, SBS and The Herald today. What did you make about how clearly biased their position on this war is? Usual suspects. Good evening to you, Shari. And we shouldn't be surprised, really, should we? I mean, when you listed who asked those questions, and I didn't see the press club today, but what you played there is just... Uh, it, it's typical of what the left-leaning media, particularly in the ABC and also SBS and The Guardian, are reporting on. And I'm just bewildered why, why this misinformation uh, that is being fed to Australians is allowed to go ahead. Where's the balance? I mean... You know, you've got to balance your coverage, uh, as we have on, on Sky, and you've got to talk to both sides. And, and your reporters have, have got to ask sensible questions, and they were not sensible questions. I'm just gobsmacked that they were allowed to get away with that. I mean, this misinformation campaign is incredible. When you consider that the media jumped and reported that that hospital had been levelled, 500 people dead, and it had been done by Israel, and it turns out that it was a rogue missile from the Palestinian side that landed in the car park, and probably, tragically, killed 50 people, not 500. Mm. Ordinary Australians just shake their head, and I, I think they agree with you that sensible Australians understand what's going on here. And, and why we're treating Hamas so differently to ISIS is beyond me. Well, I think well-informed and well-read Australians understand, but if you're only consuming you know, some of these outlets who have this sort of biased coverage, then I think you would be brainwashed. And I, I think also, Steve, you know, it, it's interesting when we look at that address today, we look at the hostile questions, we see the sort of coverage that the ABC is producing and you just wonder how no one in management is saying this needs to be more unbiased and we need to be more respectful of a community that, that's just had such an appalling terror attack. Now, Steve, let's turn to the... Well, United... we know on the ABC, you know. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead, yeah. Oh, on the ABC, on the ABC, you know, and we're going to talk about David Anderson in a moment, but... Uh, on the ABC, I mean, the, the, the journalists run the, run the company, not, not the bloke who's supposed to be the editor-in-chief of the place. Oh, good point. And you know what? We've been laying into the New York Times over the past couple of days for having to publish that editor's note admitting they got it wrong in the hospital bombing. But at least they published an editor's note admitting they got it wrong. I noticed the BBC also made some correction, but the ABC hasn't done that here. Many of the other media outlets here who erroneously reported that Israel was responsible, you know, point blank, without any questions, they haven't apologised to the readers. They've just simply, you know, removed their Twitter posts or social media posts or made no correction at all when, you, when it comes to radio hosts. Now, over in the US, we are having a cost of living crisis in Australia at the moment, but the Prime Minister is having a swish dinner at the White House with Joe Biden. That's going to take place overnight our time. The state dinner, of course, was offered as a gesture after Biden cancelled visiting Australia for the Quad. But, Steve, at the same time, you've got more than a third of households in Australia aren't, can't afford food. This is according to Food Bank. Uh, a lot of people are skipping meals because they just can't afford to feed their family. Do you think that the images coming out of the White House and particularly the menus being released, you know, roasted beet salad, butternut squash soup, um, braised short ribs, hazelnut and chocolate mousse cake washed down with wines that cost $100 Australian a bottle. You know, how's this going to be received by Australians? Well, it's not a good look. I mean, look, if the Prime Minister gets invited to a state dinner, I guess he can't say no and doesn't go. But, I mean, the thing that gets me about this is uh, you've got an APEC meeting taking place, I think, in about 10 days' time, and Anthony Albanese will be back on the west coast of the United States for that as well. And then he goes to China to meet President Xi. So he's doing a lot of travelling, um, and he's probably glad that he's out of the country at the moment. I mean, it's a great diversion for the PM, isn't it, Shari, given the 60-40 result in that referendum on The Voice. So he's probably glad that he's not here. Uh, but you just wonder, when he's sitting down talking to Joe Biden, I wonder if Biden's advisers have played him that grab that you played there of Anthony Albanese as a young bloke uh, with a megaphone sticking up for Palestine. I, I'm sure that's not being played to the US president. Yes, we all perhaps are more radical when we're younger, but the problem that the PM has, and so does his Foreign Affairs Minister Penny Wong, 
they are of the hard left and they have throughout their student days and their early political careers been ardent supporters of Palestine and they can't just you know whitewash that and say oh well I've now completely changed their mind because I think deep down they probably haven't. Mm. I should actually make it clear while that one protest was from his early days his anti-Israel comments, his pro-Palestinian comments in Parliament and in media interviews extend right up until 2018. So these are views that he still holds. Um, and I've played those clips a lot of times on my show. Perhaps I should play them again tomorrow night. But these are views that he still holds. But th th that particular video of him at the pro-Palestinian rally holding the megaphone, that was when he was much younger. Um, Steve, I want to ask you about Jacinta Price. She's hit back at this controversial open letter from Voice supporters who said that the referendum's rejection of the voice was a shameful act. What did you make of that letter and Jacinta's response? I thought her response was appropriate and I thought the letter was disgraceful. I mean, uh, you know, no voters like myself uh, have been labelled as shameful and borderline racist. Now, OK, if you want to call me uh, shameful for voting no or a racist, that's your right. Put your name to it. I mean, you can't let, put this letter out anonymously and not attach a name to it. I mean, everyone's entitled to their view. And if, if people think that, fine. But I want to know who you are. I want to know who I need to convince that I, I voted the way I did. In fact, I couldn't vote because I was on a plane, but I was intending to vote no. I, I was going to vote that way because that's what I felt I should do. Uh, and that was my right. So if you want to criticise me, um, you've got a public platform, put your name to the letter, and I'd be more than willing to have you on any Sky show that I host or on your show with you, Shari, to have a debate about it. Mm. But faceless people penning a letter describing no voters as shameful and racist, that's just not on. Mm -hmm. All right, Steve Price, thank you so much for your time.